Welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 116 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about adding custom events to ASP.NET Composite Custom Control that we have been working with from parts 112 to 115. If you haven't watched these videos, I strongly recommend to watch them first before proceeding with this video. We have also discussed about adding custom events to user controls in parts 106 to 108. You can watch these videos from the ASP.NET video tutorial at the link that you can find on the slide. Adding custom events to a composite custom control is similar to adding events to user controls. If you know how to add you know, custom events to user controls, then you already know how to do, do, do that for composite custom controls as well. There are five simple steps to actually add a date selected event to the composite custom calendar control that we have been working with. So if you look at this composite custom calendar control, as soon as I select a date from this control, let's say for example I select January 10, 20. Uh, you know this controller should raise this date selected event and obviously the first step to do that is to create a class date selected event arguments class that's going to contain event data now I have this class here so let me copy this class and then let's go back to the custom controls project so this is the custom controls project now I'm going to create this class outside of this custom calendar class okay because this is a class by itself and this is going to contain even data okay now this may not be very clear the purpose of this class at this moment but don't worry when we actually consume this event that's when we will understand better the purpose of this class but look at the contents of this class this is a very simple class all we have is a private variable a constructor and a property okay so this is a private variable of type date time okay selected date underscore selected date and to initialize this private variable we have a constructor here date selected event arguments you know this is the constructor into this constructor we are passing in a parameter of type date time again selected date so we are using this parameter to initialize this private field underscore selected date and then we have a public property here. The important thing to notice here is that it only has a get accessor, meaning this is a read only property. The users of this class can only read the value of this variable underscore selected date using this property. They can't set the value. Okay, that's our intention behind having only the get accessor. So if they want to initialize this property, they can do that only using the constructor of the class. Okay, so a private field a constructor to initialize that field and a public property which returns the value of that private field a very simple class and another another important point to keep in mind this class inherits from the event arguments class okay so that's the first step later we'll see how we actually use this class this is a very useful class which is going to contain event data for our date selected event okay so that's the first step so what's the second step? Create date selected event handler delegate. So let's go ahead and create a delegate. Uh, anytime we are talking about events, events and delegates go in hand in hand because events are variables of type delegate. So obviously, if you have to create an event, there should be an associated delegate. So let's go ahead and create delegate first. And let's call the delegate as date selected event handler delegate okay and delegate is also a type and can and it can exist by its own so the delegate need not be present inside another class so public delegate and if you remember when we were discussing about events and delegates in parts 106 to 108 we have spoken about what delegates are what events are in a very great detail so if you're new to events and delegates I strongly recommend to watch these videos from the ASP.NET video tutorial first all right, let's go ahead and create a delegate. A delegate will have, you know, signature that is similar to a function with a delegate keyword. Now, if you remember, the signature of a function will have a return type. Here, the function, let's say, it's not going to return anything. So it's going to have void return type. And then we are going to call our delegate as date selected event handler delegate. So date selected event handler. And this is going to have two parameters, object sender and then look at this now I'm going to make use of this class date selected event args okay so this class 
is is useful for you know containing the event data so i'm going to use that class so date selected event args e okay so if you look at this delegate declaration it's very simple it has a wide written type and it takes two parameters one is of type object and the other one is of type date selected event args the class that we have just created in step one and with the delegate keyword in front of it okay so that's our second step what's the third step create a date selected event now what is an event an event is nothing but a variable of type delegate now if I have to create a variable of type let's say integer then how do I do that I simply say int i for example along the same lines if I have to create an event then you know if I have to create a variable of type this delegate I simply say date selected event handler and then specify a variable okay so what's a delegate uh, what's an event an event is nothing but a variable of type delegate so let's go ahead and create an event now remember the event has to be raised by the custom calendar class so I'm going to create event inside the class so I expand this custom calendar class and then let's go ahead and create the event so an event is a variable of type delegate so we have created date selected event handler delegate so my date selected event is going to be a variable of type this delegate and then if I want that to be an event all I do is I put an access modifier public and then use the event keyword so now date selected is the event that is going to be raised by this custom calendar class so that's our third step okay so what's our fourth step create a protected virtual method to raise the event again we have discussed about the significance of using this protected virtual method to actually raise an event rather than raising that directly again we discussed about that in parts 106 to 108 I strongly recommend to watch those videos okay so let's create this protected virtual method and just to save some time in typing I have this method already typed so let me copy that and let's go back to the project custom controls and within the calendar class the custom calendar class I'm going to create this protected virtual method and look at this this is very simple all this method does is it takes in date selected event arguments you know a parameter of type date selected event arguments and what we are doing with that object look at that we are checking so first of all this is a protected virtual method with a void written type and I'm calling this as on date selection okay so whenever somebody selects a date that's when I call this method to actually raise date selected event okay and date selected event targs object is passed in as a parameter and look at this here this is very important we are actually checking if date selected is not equal to null what is date selected that's the event so if the event is not null then go ahead and raise the event that's what we are doing here now we again discussed the significance of checking null before actually raising the event in parts 106 to 108 okay so I'm go not going to repeat that here so uh, it's very important that we check for null before we actually raise the event and look at this what is this event this is nothing but a date selected what is this this is a variable of type date selected event handler and if you look at date selected event handler it has two parameters so obviously when you're about to raise that event you have to pass the arguments for those two parameters okay so if you look at you know the opening brace look at this it expects sender the object who is raising the event so who is raising this event I'm using this keyword meaning an instance of this custom calendar will actually raise an event if you remember in the demo project we're actually using that custom calendar control look at this if I flip that to the source so custom calendar one that's an instance of custom calendar object I mean class okay so here when we said raising when we are raising the event here we said okay this for the source parameter here I mean for the sender parameter meaning an instance of this class custom calendar class is going to raise this date selected event and what is this e that's going to contain our event data data selected I mean date selected event arguments object so whatever is coming into this method that is being passed you know to this event 
okay in our next step we will actually see how to use this method to raise this event date selected okay so that's our next step finally raise the event when the date selection in the calendar changes now when does the date in the calendar changes whenever somebody selects a date now remember whenever we select a date this is the ASP.NET calendar but this all put together is our custom calendar so whenever the selection changed event in the calendar in the ASP.NET calendar is raised that's when we want to raise a date selected event for this composite custom control okay so let's go back to custom controls and let's look at the code where we have calendar underscore selection changed event so we have here calendar underscore selection changed so when will this you know event be raised whenever the selection in the calendar changes okay so at that point of time we want to raise date selected event as well and look at this to raise date selected event we can make use of this virtual method that we have just written on date selection so I'm gonna call this method there okay so here but look at that if I have to raise the event using on date selection method then I have to pass an object of type date selected event arguments okay so first I need to create an instance of that class so let's go ahead and do that so date selected event arguments let's say e or let's call this event data so I have that event data there and look at the constructor of this class this is expecting a date time object to be passed in so what type of uh, you know what date time do we pass in here look at this whenever a user selects a date using that calendar we have the selected date property which gives the selected date so I'm going to pass the same selected date okay so we have this event data now event data object all that is left out is to pass that event data object to this on data on date selection method we are done so this method is going to raise that event for us look at this the whole purpose of this date selected event arguments class is that so whenever the event when we are, whenever we are about to raise the event we need to pass to this on date selection method the event data and how do we get the event data from the calendar object in the calendar whenever they select whenever the end user selects a date that will be retrieved using selected date property of the calendar ASP.NET calendar which in turn is used to you know create an instance of the state selected event arguments object and then we are passing that object into this method and if you look at this method on data on date selection what is that doing that's actually using that object to raise the event and whoever is going to consume this event the event handler method is going to receive this date selected object date selected event or arguments object and then we can find out what is the value that is selected by the user very easily okay so that's it we are pretty much done so let's go ahead and build this solution so using this five simple steps we have actually created this custom event date selected now let's go ahead and see how to actually consume this event and that's pretty straightforward okay so we have built the project and on the status bar you you can see build succeeded now let's flip to the ASP.NET web application project now let me first get rid of um, you know a version that I have already here And then I'm going to get rid of this button declaration as well. And then let's go back to code behind file. Get rid of the button click event from there. Okay. So on web form and from the toolbox, let's also remove the custom calendar control. So go to the toolbox and then remove custom calendar. okay and let's quickly check in the bin folder of the ASP.NET web application project so bin we should have custom controls assembly there so let's get rid of that let's close that and let's check in the references 
remove that from there. All right. So let's go ahead and add the assembly once again. Choose Toolbox Items, Browse, and we know that the project is in C Drive. C, navigate to the Custom Controls project. Custom Controls bin, debug, and Custom Controls dot DLL. So we have the custom calendar added. All that is left out is to drag and drop that onto the designer surface, which should you know, put an instance of the custom calendar control on this web form. OK, so we have that registered ID is custom calendar 1. Let's flip to the designer mode. And we can associate an image with that using image button image URL property. So image is forward slash calendar dot jpg. That should pick up the image from that folder which we have. And the most important thing, look at this. When I press, when I go to the properties and then click on this events icon, you should now see date selected event. Look at that. We have the date selected event. Okay. Now when I double click within the text box here, look at that on that event, I have the event handler method automatically generated for us. Custom calendar one underscore date selected. And look at this, the date selected event arguments object that is now passed in to this event handler method. Now I can use this object to find out what is the date that the user has selected. So that is the you know significance of having this date selected event arguments class. Okay, so now I simply can say response.write e dot selected date. Remember this class contains a get prop I mean a selected date property. So we are using that property to actually retrieve the date. That's the whole point in creating this property. And you remember this constructor is used to initialize this private field when we are actually creating an instance of that object in the custom controls. Why did we uh, where did we use that constructor? Right here. The constructor that takes in date time. All right. So I'm going to use the selected date and I'm going to convert that to short date string. So that's the selected date. Okay. So when will this method be called? This method will be called whenever date selected event is raised. And look at this. Uh, let's go back to the designer. So when I double click this, what actually happened behind the scenes? Within the source, look at that on date selected. When, when this event is fired, you know, this event handler method will be called. Just like when you have a button, you know, on click, button one underscore click event handler method will be called. Okay, similar to that, whenever date selected event is raised, this event handler method will be called. So let's go ahead and run this. And as soon as I click, uh, you know, as soon as I select a date from the calendar, the event will be raised, the event handler method will handle that, and it should print out the selected date. So I am selecting 17th. Look at that, as soon as I select the date, it's going to print that for me. Okay, so whenever the selection changes, the event gets raised, and that event is actually, you know, consumed by this event handler method that you can see custom calendar one underscore date selected. And within that event handler method, we are using the object date selected event arguments object that contains the event data, and we are printing that on the web form by converting it to to short date string. So five simple steps to create custom event. You know, it's very much similar to how we do it for user control. So if you know that, then it's pretty much straightforward. In our next video, we'll actually discuss about assigning an image. Look at this. At the moment, if you look at this custom calendar control, uh, it doesn't have an image associated with it uh, in the toolbox. If you look at that, it has a very generic Im image there. Instead of that, we can actually associate our own image. Uh, we'll discuss about how to do that in our next video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.